possible. Use it for your domestic use, for your agricultural use. And don't celebrate yet. The rains would only be here for three more days, Met Department says. And our sign language interpreter tonight is Meresha Owiti. Let's begin with Nairobi County Governor Dr. Evans Kidero appeared before the Senate County Public Accounts and Investments Committee to explain why the county government transferred 11 billion shillings from the exchequer to commercial banks without approval from the controller of budget. The governor was also put to task to explain why some of the money the county collects is not banked in the county revenue fund account. However, Kidero argued the Senate has no authority to question how the county government utilizes local revenue. Here's Patrick Amimo opening our bulletin tonight to that report. Yeah, and, uh, that was Members of the Senate County Public Accounts and Investments Committee probed Nairobi Governor Evans Kidero and the county executive over the use of local revenue by the county government after the Auditor General raised a red flag. Auditor General Edward Ouko questioned the whereabouts of 10.3 billion shillings that the county government collected in local revenue but failed to transfer the cash to the county revenue fund account as required by law. The auditor says only 1 billion shillings out of the 11.4 billion shillings collected in the 2014-2015 financial year was deposited into the county bank account. The Auditor General also accused the county government of transferring 11.3 billion shillings from the exchequer to operational accounts in commercial banks without written approval of control of budget, contrary to the Public Finance and Management Act. There are two queries. One, auditors, the whereabouts of this money, 10 billion, 333 million, 449,206, if an audit is required. Uh, of what the, how the 10 billion was spent and which orders it was made, then the, the uh, Senate can pronounce itself on that. But I still take you back to issue of jurisdiction. The Senate has no jurisdiction on locally generated revenue. It is the county assembly that has jurisdiction. The county assembly has queried this, a report has been done. Kidero accused the national government of defaulting on payment of land rates, parking fee, and other services provided by the county government. Kidero attributed the county government's poor delivery of services to the billions of shillings owed by the national government in local revenue. Someone, uh, CS and PS Treasury, to come and explain why they are not able to meet their commitment. While on the other hand, when KRA wants to get money from us, what they owe, they don't even ask us, they just go straight to bank, our bank account and attach it. If it can be made clear that uh, uh, national government won't pay, will not pay, then we know from the very beginning so that we can exclude such revenue from our projections and we adjust our ex expenditure budget accordingly. One on the army land in Embakasi where we are owed 61.5 billion. The second was the outstanding payments on rates and capacs owed by the various ministries through um, treasury asylo, a uh, total amount being about 11 billion. Kidero will appear again before the committee on May 10th to explain why records of some county employees who have benefited from allowances and interests do not tally with those at the Kenya Revenue Authority. Patrick Amimo, KTN News. Let's now talk politics and panic has gripped Jubilee aspirants in the North Rift region following claims that powerful individuals in the office of the deputy president have drawn up a list of preferred candidates for the party primaries. Elvis Kosge reports from Wasingishu County. <laughs> Elected leaders in the North Rift region are now linking the office of Deputy President William Ruto 
to a reported secret list of preferred Jubilee candidates in Rift Valley ahead of the party primaries. Wasingishu Governor Jackson Mandago, Nandi Hills MP Alfred Keter, and Capserate Member of Parliament Oscar Sudi are alleging a plot to rig them out in the party primaries by powerful individuals in the office of the DP. <laughs> When I say Harambe, respond in tough voice as Mandago again. And where you shout for whole with doctors and madmen to hear. In fact, shout so that Rudos psychophants can hear clearly. Mandago is accusing the Wasingishu County Commissioner of planning to use more than a thousand officers to frustrate voters. They will spoil for Route of 2022 bit. Route of needs experienced leaders like Mandago, Suti, and Kutuny. That aside, Gladys Boshole is aspiring for the women representative post in Wasingishu to cut campaigns to capsulate and enact constituencies to sell our policies. It is now a matter of party primaries that will determine the political direction of Wasingishu County. Elvis Kosgei, KT News, in Wasingishu County. The Jubilee Party primaries will now be staggered over a period of two days and not a single day as had earlier been planned. The National Election Board Chairman Andrew Musangi says the move was largely caused by the increase in number the counties the party is scheduled to hold primaries. A total of 22 counties shall hold primaries on Friday the 21st as planned, while the remaining 23 will hold their nominations on April the 25th is that the party has noted that the areas that will be needing to receive our attention at the primaries in terms of competitive counties have since increased from 33 to 45. Now what this has done is it has taken the National Elections Board together with our logistics teams back to the drawing boards and upon review one of the first decisions uh, we realized we had to make with the increase of competitive counties is a decision to split the primaries into a two-day process. We have decided to segregate the primaries to start firstly on the 21st of April and to have a supplementary session of primaries on the 25th of April. That is next week on Tuesday. 
Nominated MP Isaac Mwaura has accused his opponent Simon Kingara of using goons to attack him yesterday. He accuses Kingara of using crude weapons and guns to attack him and his supporters during a campaign meeting. The attack left Mwaura with head injuries. In his defense, Kingara says he was undertaking a development project and was not involved in the attack. Both Mwaura and Kingara are set for a face-off for the Rural constituency seat in the Jubilee nomination set for Friday. Wish. Okay. And I can tell you for sure, there were a mixture of weapons. There were a mixture of weapons and we highly suspect, because after some time I, I lost consciousness, that really these people, those blunt objects including guns and you know, whatever, whatever that they used, I, I, I really, I, yeah, it, it was, it, I mean, there were, there were gunshots all over. There were gunshots all over. In fact, why not for the fact that the police came and threw tear gas around? Then the, it would have been bus, I can assure you. Kwa sasa mimi sina buduki na hata ninaomba polisi wanipatie buduki kwa sababu wao walikuwa na buduki bidi. Ah uh, kwa hivyo kama ninaweza pata buduki hata mimi nitafurahi kwa sababu walikuwa na bidi na kila mara pale yote tunaenda wakikunikuta kwa mkutano wanatoanga buduki wananitolea na mimi naondokanga sababu ya kuondoka na mimi naambianga watu wangu hakuna haja ya kupigana watu waumie wakati wa kupiga kura wao kwa hospitali. There is tension in Taita Taveta where ODM election officials are announcing provisional results of the governorship race. Supporters of governorship aspirant Thomas Modegu are claiming that although Modegu had won according to the results they had gathered from the polling stations, those results being announced right now are very different from what they had earlier. Now, earlier provisional results had shown that Thomas Modegu beat Taita Taveta governor. Modegu reportedly got 18,000 421 votes against Mrutu's 15,911. But Mrutu has contested the outcome, saying five of his strongholds did not participate in the primaries. Reports from Taita Taveta now indicate that the party has called for all the five places, including Chala Primary, Jipe, Mahadakini Primary Schools, St. Joseph Kivukoni, and Old King Pol polling stations, I beg your pardon, should be given a chance to vote. But Modegu's camp has protested this. Na kitu nataka kuomba ni hivi, majibu haya ya si tangazwe leo. Kwa sababu gani, taveta hawaja tendeo uhaki. Kuna vituo sita ambavyo paka sahizi hawaja pigia kura. Na hiyo, tunahano kamba si sheria. Mimi kama mama, ambaye napigania kitihiki, mimi kama mama ambaye nataka kuwa kiongozi, nataka kuanzia saizi, niwe mama ukutetea haki, kwa sababu nataka kupigania, uh, kupigania kikiti ndo niweze kuenda kurepresent watu wangu katika, uh, katika parliament. Na sita furahia kwamba watu wangu zaidi ya elfu saba ambao wajapiga kura, kura hizo ziweze kupotea hivi hivi. Mundanyi imetangaza matoke yao. Voi itangaza matoke yao. Mwatate haijatangaza matoke yao. Ni nini kimekosekana cha mwatate hata matoke haya sitangazo? Sisi tumeangalia agents wetu what? Na mebainika wazuazi. Mwatate niko na kura zaidi elfu nane. Mpinza nyongu hiko na kura karibu elfu tatu. Kwa hivyo, tukiangalia tofauti ya kura zangu za mwatate na zake za mwatate, Nimemshida na kama elfuta. Nyamira Governor John Nyagarama has been declared the winner of the Nyamira ODM Governor primaries. In results announced this morning, Nyagarama garnered 17,012 votes against West Mugirango MP James Gasami's 12,126 votes. Hours before the results were announced, Gasami and Commander raised a number of issues alleging there was a well-organized scheme to rig them out of the party. Gasami seemed to cast doubt on some of the party's national elections board members whom he accused of ignoring his complaints. <laughs> I am 
I'm telling the people of Nyamira that I'm happy that they have uh, uh, they are in the process of giving me another chance because uh, this is only the beginning there and I want to thank them for uh, showing confidence on me. The first time I was given a message in the morning at 8 o'clock was there was a problem in the Menyenya polling station. So I decided actually to walk, from, I mean to drive from my place to Menyenya. And I found out that there were materials who were missing totally in Iborabu. So totally in Iborabu constituency, there was no register, there was no, uh, you know, officials, and everything was in a mess. Funyula Member of Parliament Dr. Paula Tuoma now says he will vie for the Busia governor's seat as an independent candidate come August the 8th this year. Tuoma has maintained he will not participate in the repeat elections in Tesla North and Tesla South as ordered by the ODM Elections Board. Paul Otoma says he's not yet out of the Busia governorship press. The legislator maintains he will be on the ballot come what may, even if it means going it alone. I've already made a decision. I've told you the decision is that I'm going to run as a gubernatorial par, I mean, candidate in Busia, with or without ODM. And that's why I'm saying if the honor of the baby cannot be given, Solomon had already made judgment over 3,000 years ago. Why do we need to reinvent the wheel? We can't start damaging. The party has not committed a crime. It's individuals who have committed a crime. Otoma says he has held discussions with the elders from the county after ODM elections board announced a repeat of nominations in Teso North and Teso South constituencies. I have been taken in circles since this whole exercise began because I raised issues that even from the way the elections were, were prepared, how could they allow one candidate to, you know, select... His uh, officers to be returning officers, to be agent, I mean to be presiding officers. But despite all that, I said, okay, all the same, let's continue. And despite all those advantages that he was given, and we, we won the elections, I'm still being subjected to all this kind of anguish. By tomorrow, it will almost be like one whole week. I've not slept. I'm just running around trying to make sure that I protect the, the interests of the people of Busia. He accuses his main opponent and incumbent governor, Sospita Ojamong, of spreading falsehood and massive corruption at the county. The MP argues that repeating nominations is unacceptable, underlying the role he has played in building ODM and uniting the people of Busia. Sitaki kitu ambaye itaanza kuleta watu wa Busia ambao wameishi na umoja. Uwe msomali, uwe mjaluo, uwe mluya, uwe mteso, tumeishi kwa ama, kwa mani. 